Welcome to come to the table. Living, living. Oops, sorry guys, I'm bumping you. Living for Jesus. Um, so glad you're here to check out this channel or coming back. I do appreciate you and just um, so thankful for y'all and comments I've received to encourage me. Um, especially from, I, I believe her name is Lou. Thank you, Lou, from this side of 40. If you like makeup, you should check out her channel. Um, she said some encouraging words to me, and I do appreciate that and wanted to give her a shout out. So today, first, as always, we ask the Lord to open our eyes and our ears so that we can see and hear what he wants us to see. And let our hearts be receptive to his word. Teach us, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and we will observe it to the end. Give us understanding that we may keep your law and observe it with all our heart. Make us walk in the path of your commandments, for we delight in it. Lord, please give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so we may know you better. I pray that the eyes of our heart may be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which you have called us. All right, so let's get started. Today, I am in, let me zoom out, hopefully you don't bump too much, and my journaling Bible, um, The Promises of God, in the modern English version. Sorry, y'all, y'all are bumping so much this morning. Okay, so I'm going to come back in. So this morning, I started reading in my study Bible, my Amplified Study Bible, in Psalms, because I have not done Psalms on a regular basis, because my goal was to do one every day, but I have gotten away from it and done other things or, or whatever, and I said, let me read Psalms 88, and it's a petition to be saved from death. And then after I read it, which I'm going to read it in a minute, after I read it, I was like, huh, okay, who, what, who wrote this? And, um, cause usually when I'm reading Psalms, there's some encouragement in it uh, after the down, maybe after the words that aren't so happy. So when the, when the words are just depressing and it's like, whoa, 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 usually I have found that the Psalms are, are lightened up at the end, like, thank you, Jesus. But even though I went through this, you are still God. And, um, so this one was a little different, but you can still see that the author knows the Lord still, even in this Psalms. That may be a bit um, dark, maybe. Anyway, so I'm going to show you. I'm so excited when I was, I said, let me just see who Haman is. Because Psalm 88 is a, a song, a psalm of the sons of Korah to the chief musician set to chant mournfully. A didactic, a, a didactic or reflective poem of Haman the Ezraite, and I'm not sure if I can recall who Haman was, and so I decided to do some digging, some searching through the scriptures, and it's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and start. <clears throat> oh Lord, the God of my salvation, I have cried out by day and in the night before you. Let my prayer come before you and enter in your presence. Incline your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like a man who has no strength, cast away from the cast away and abandoned among the dead, like the slain who lie in a grave, whom you no longer remember, and they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit and dark places in the depths. Your in the depths, your wrath has has rested heavily upon me, 
and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me an object of loathing to them. I am shut up and I cannot go out. My eye grows dim with sorrow. O oh Lord, I have called on you every day. I have spread out my hands to you. Will you perform wonders for the dead? Shall the departed spirits arise and praise you? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave or your faithfulness faithfulness in Abaddon? Will your wonders be known in the darkness and your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But I have cried out to you, O Lord, for your help. And in the morning, my prayer will come to you. O Lord, why do you reject me? Why do you hide your face from me? I was afflicted and close to death from my youth on. I suffer your terrors. I am overcome. Your fierce, your fierce wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They have surrounded me like flood waters all day long. They have completely encompassed me. Lover and friend, you have placed far from me. My familiar friends are in darkness. Okay. So, and as you can see, I highlighted the Lord in yellow and I circled any reference to me in pink. And so, after that, I was like, wow, that's really... After reading it, I was like, man, I wonder what happened for this to be so dark. And um, I can relate to it in different times of my life, like um, where I felt the same way and where I have cried out to God saying the similar things as Psalm 88. And so whether it was the death of my son or... Uh, rocky marriage or not knowing where financially what will happen and whether it's um whatever trials I'm going through I felt this way before in the past several times and um the more I dig deeper into the word and the more my relationship with God is strengthened I have not felt like that exactly anymore, if that makes sense. So what ha I'm going to come out a little. Um, and so I said, you know what? I want to dig deeper. And I said to myself, I'm going to use this journaling Bible to go deeper in the Psalms and figure out where their stories are. And I've done that a couple other times and I find it really rewarding. So for this psalm, I did want to go back. I'm going to come out a little more. I did come back and read Psalms 88 a few times. And so in my journaling Bible, <clears throat> I highlighted, Oh Lord, God of my salvation. So before, before the psalm starts, before... All the woes are started. He says, O oh Lord, God of my salvation. So he knows God will save him. And that's, that's, that's good. We need to remember that even in our darkness. We need to remember God will save us. And then the pink, or it's actually red, but it looks pink. Because they are the erasable Crayola um, coloring pencils. It says, so I decided to highlight what is he, the author, what is he asking of the Lord? Or what is he saying that he is, he has done? And he says, I cry out day and night before you. Lord, I call daily upon you in verse nine, and I have stretched out my hands to you. Verse 13 says, but unto you have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning my prayer comes before you. And then I highlighted verse 2 in green. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry because he is requesting something from the Lord. I decided to 
marketing green. And, and then when I, when I separate and dissect scripture and the Psalms, it just makes it more clear. What are, what is he, what are the wants, requests, um, anything, what do you see? I, I found that he's saying you, God has laid him in the depths of the pit. God's wrath lies heavy upon him. God has caused my commands to be far away. And God has made him an abomination to them. I was going to highlight it, but then I was like, I'll just come back and do that. Um, you know, so I found that interesting. God's fierce wrath sweeps over me. God's terrors destroy me. You know, that's what he's saying about um, what God has done. And so I found that very interesting. And then I wanted to know more. What happened? What's going on during this time? And so first of all, I'm not familiar with Haman and I've read the Bible chronologically and his name does not, I don't recall anything about him. So then what I did was I had my um, Blue Letter Bible app oops, on my tablet. I took that out and I, here I'll show you, I took my Blue Letter Bible app. And then I hit the search uh, thingamajiggy and I typed in Haman's name. And so, because I didn't know where to find Haman and it showed me that there in the King James version, there are 15 verses that show Haman's name. Okay, so we start there. But I've also learned that there are possibly three Haman's in scripture. The first one I learned was, or there was one, I don't know if he was the first or whatever, but in first Kings, oops, my bad guys. In first Kings 431, let's go there first. And it says, oh, wait a minute. That's not just saying that. First Kings 431. It says, for he was wiser than all other men, wiser than, and this is talking about Solomon. Solomon was wiser than all other men, wiser than Ethan the Ezraite, Haman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mehol. So you see, we find Haman there. But that's all it says about Haman. We don't know if this is the same Haman that is referred to in Psalm 88 or not. Um, and so I'm going to take my blue letter Bible back to Psalm 88 because I want to read a portion of a commentary that I, mm -mm, that I found that was that helped me out a little. Okay. So, and then the next thing I seen was in, let's go to First Chronicles 2, 6. And this Haman says, the sons of Zerah. And so this is um, from Judah to David. And so it takes us through Judah. And it says, the sons of Zerah were Zimri, Ethan, and Haman, Calcol, Dara, five of them in all. And so if we go up, we know that, I'm going to read verse 3, the sons of Judah were Er, Onan, and Shelah. And I'm just going to pronounce the names the way I can. I'm not going to stop because it might not be the right pronunciation, but just to keep the flow, I'm just going to do my best. These three were born to him by the daughter of Shua, the Canaanites. Now Ur, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he put him to death. Then Tamar, his daughter-in-law, bore Perez and Zerah for him, and all Judah had five sons. So Judah had sons. A couple of them died. 
One was Tamar's husband, and actually two were. And they died. But Judah didn't want to give Tamar another son. The one that was left was younger, I believe. And um, he didn't give them to Tamar. And so Tamar was dressed like a prostitute on the side of the road. And Judah slept with her and then had became pregnant. Which, when you are digging into the Word and you're just being led by the Spirit, finding, digging deeper into the story of what is going on helps you get clarity of, oh, okay, this is Tamar and Judah. That This is that Haman from that line, from their descendants. But then that's all it says. This, and then we start coming to um, Haman from the Levites. And this, I mean, we can only assume, but let me go to this commentary. All right, and I'm just going to read it real quick. And then after that, we're going to go through Haman the Levite. Okay. It should seem by the titles of this and the following psalm that Haman was the penman of the one and Ethan of the other. There were two of these names who were sons of Zerah, the son of Judah. First Chronicles 2, 4, and 6. There were two others famed for wisdom. First Kings 4, 31, where to magnify Solomon's wisdom, he is said to be wiser than Haman and Ethan. Whether the Haman and Ethan, who were Levites and presenters in the Songs of Zion, were the same, we are not sure, nor which of these, nor whether any of these were the penmen of these psalms. There was a Haman that was one of the chief singers who was called the king seer or prophet in the words of God. And First Chronicles 25, 5. Oops, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all can't even see. Um... It's probable that this also was a seer and yet could see no comfort for himself, an instructor and comforter of others, and yet himself putting comfort away from him. The very first words of the psalm are the only words of comfort and support in all the psalm. Okay, so we don't know for sure which Haman it is, but just I decided to go where the scripture led me and it was very interesting and when you do and if you add commentary to your bible study do it at the very end so that you have whatever the holy spirit gives you first and not what man has said first over the holy spirit okay so Haman and so we know that um the psalm this psalmist knows God and that God is his salvation and he knows that God he's asking God to hear his prayer and you know there will be relief so okay first we're gonna go with Haman the Levite because that has a lot of information and it was very interesting where I ended up so I read first chronicles 2 6 and so we're just going to go in order of where they are, where it is in Chronicles, in First Chronicles. And so let's go to the next verse, First Chronicles 6. And I highlighted everywhere that Haman's word name came up in blue so that it would be quick to the eye. All right, so Haman. Haman, before we start, let me just write, tell you what I wrote down. Haman came from Levi, um, Joseph's, one of Joseph's brothers, because you know it's Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, I believe. I can't remember the, um, the order. Of, oh, there we go. So it's Ezachar, Benjamin, Naphtali, Manasseh. Well, Ephraim and Manasseh were David's children. Oof, goodness, girl, get it together. But Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ezekiah, 
Dan, Naphtali, Benjamin, and David, amongst probably a couple other brothers. And so this Haman is from, the one that I followed, is from the line of Levi. And he is Joel's son. And Joel came from the Kohaths. And let's read. So David um, appointed musicians in the temple. And so I'm going to come down a little closer so you all can see. Okay. So in First Chronicles 6, starting in 31, it says, These are the ones whom David appointed over the service of song in the house of the Lord after the ark rested there. Now they were ministering before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of meeting with singing until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and they were arranged by their order according to their service. These are the ones standing in order with their sons, Haman, the singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zeph, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amase, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah. And then it just keeps naming the people, the sons of the Kohites, the Kohites. And so I was like, okay, so that's, that's where we first see this Haman one. And so who, what, what, is, what makes him so special? So it then takes us to 1 Chronicles 15. Let's go to 15. And so what I'm going to do is read what happened before and a little after sometimes where Haman is mentioned in scripture so we can place into context what's happening during this time and then maybe if this is the Haman that Psalm 88 is talking about you can see maybe why this psalm was um, wrote okay so then the ark after that when the ark was brought to Jerusalem and first chronicles 15 17 says so the Levites placed Haman the son of Joel and from his brothers, okay, so I'm going to go up a little. And let's just start. I'm just going to uh, just read a little here, here, and here and there in chapter 15 of First Chronicles. So in the beginning, so David built houses for himself in the city of David, and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. That's verse 1. And David said, no one may carry the ark of God except the Levites, since the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him always. And so David assembled all Israel to Jerusalem in order to bring up the ark of the Lord to place to the place he had prepared for it. And David gathered representatives of the sons of Aaron and the Levites as follows. And this is very important because it tells you how Haman became or is here. David, okay. From the sons of Kohath, Uriel, the leader, and 120 of his brothers. From the sons of Merari, Isaiah, the leader, and 220 of his brothers. From the sons of Gershom, Joel, the leader, and 130 of his brothers. From the sons of Elizaphan, Shemaiah, the leader, and 200 of his brothers. From the sons of Haran, Eliel, the leader, and 80 of his brothers. From the sons of Uziel, Aminadab, the leader, and 112 of his brothers. Then David called for Zadok, Zadok, and Abiathar, the priest, and for the Levites, Uriel, Isaiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. He said to them, you are the captains of the fathers. You 
or the captains of the father's house for the Levites, consecrate yourselves, you and your brothers, so you may bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. Because on the first attempt, without you, the Lord struck out against us since we did not seek him properly. So the priest and the Levites consecrated themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. The sons of the Levites lifted up the ark of God, just as Moses commanded, with the poles on their shoulders, according to the word of the Lord. Then David told the leaders, uh, then David told the leaders of the Levites to position their brothers, the singers, with musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals to resound with joyful songs. So the Levites placed Haman, the son of Joel, and from his brothers Asaph, the son of Berechiah, and from the brothers, the sons of Merari, Ethan, the son of Cushiah, and with them their brothers of the second rank, Zechariah, Ben, Jazil, Shemarmareth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Benaniah, Messiah, Mattathiah, Elephelu, Mekneah, Obed Edom, and Jael, the gatekeepers. And then that takes us to verse 19. So the singers, Haman, Asaph, and Ethan, were directed to sound cymbals of brass. So we know that from reading 15, chapter 15, that um, the ark was being placed and David had the Levites, and so he wanted to do right by the ark, by God. And so everyone needed to be consecrated. And then verse 16, then David told the leaders of the Levites to position their brothers and singers with musical instruments, harps, lyres, and cymbals to resound with joyful songs. So the Levites placed Haman, the son of Joel and others. So you know that Haman is a singer and he's directed to sound symbols of brass, which this is when it started getting interesting to me because I'm like, wow, because I love music and it's just the importance of music before God and praising before God. That came to my thought processing. I was like, wow, that's really interesting how important the music is when praising God and worshiping God. And so from First Chronicles 15, it took me to 16. First Chronicles 16. And so this says worship before the ark. And um, let's see. I'll start at 37 and read to 43. So he left Asaph and his brothers before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister before the Ark regularly as each day were required. And also Obed-Edom and his, 80, and his 68 brothers, while Obed-Edom, the son of Jeruthun and Hosa, were to be gatekeepers. Okay, and so 39 says, and he left Zadok, the priest, and I, I think I went a little far. That way we can say who is the he, and I do believe the he is David, the he is David, and he left Zadok, the priest, and his priestly brothers before the tabernacle of the Lord the high place that was at Gibeon to offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering continually morning and evening, according to all that was written in the law of the Lord, which he God commanded Israel with them were Haman and and Jaduthan and the rest who were chosen, who are marked by name to give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Haman and Jaduthan uh, had with them trumpets and cymbals to sound aloud and trumpets for sacred song. The sons of Jaduthan 
were appointed to the gate. And I was like, that really, at this point, I was like, I never knew Haman. And I just was in awe of how important the musicians, the Levites, were to the praising and the worshiping of God. So, to offer burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering continually, morning and evening, according to all that was written in the law of the Lord, which God commanded Israel. And Haman, he was chosen, marked by name to give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And we see that Haman had trumpets and cymbals to sound aloud and instruments for sacred song. So I just thought that was really awesome, really amazing. Very musically talented. Um, First Chronicles, that was 16. So now let's go to First Chronicles 25, 1. And so just following the trails of whatever subject matter or whoever name, you find so much about what's going on during the time that a person existed. Um, First Chronicles 25, Then David and the officers of the army also set apart for the service some of the sons of Asaph and of Haman and of Jeduthun, those who prophesied with lyres, harps, and cymbals. So Haman prophesied through music. And I started thinking, I don't know, I never thought of prophecy with music or as music. And then in my mind, as I'm reading this, I start thinking about praise dancers and, and just thinking of the different ways that God uses people to prophesy. So I I thought that was very interesting. And I'll probably dig deeper on on that because I I just found it very interesting. For Haman, the sons of Haman, Bukia, Mataniah, Uziel, Shabal, and Jeremoth, Hananiah, Hananani, Eliatha, Gedalti and Roma, Romanti, Ezar, Josh Picasha, Malothi, Hother, Mahazel. All these were the sons of Haman, the king seer, according to the words of God, to exalt him. For God gave, gave 14 sons and three daughters to Haman. And I was like, God gave... Haman, 17 children to exalt him. He's the king seer, so King David's seer, 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 seer. That's the prophet. And I've never seen that, or I never, my eyes were never open to that bit of information. All these were the sons of Haman, the king seer, according to the words of God, to exalt him. For God gave 14 sons and three daughters to Haman. All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres for the service of the house of God by decree of the king. Asaph, Jaduthan, and Haman. So the numbers, verse 7, so the number of them with their brothers who were trained in singing to the Lord, all of whom were skillful, was 288. They cast lots for the duties, small and great, teacher and student alike. So I just find, ah, this was just so, so incredible that, you know, there's, there's a job for everybody in the kingdom in the kingdom of God. So even no matter, we don't know what everyone is called to do. And 
as you can see, God called these musicians to um, to praise Him. It is so awesome. All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres for the service of the house of God by decree of the king. Serving God by playing music. If you're a musician, oh, I wish I could sing. I'm not a musician. I've played a clarinet in middle school because I was made to, but... Um, that was it. I quit quickly, quit when I could. And um, I just think it's awesome to see the calling of musicians in God's kingdom. Okay, so that's um, First Chronicles 25, 1 through 8. I'm going to finish writing that down. Okay, and then, did I? I did. And so now it took me to Second Chronicles 5. I believe that was the last place in First Chronicles. And so let's go to Second Chronicles 5 through verse um, 11. But this is the ark brought to the temple. So Solomon is now the king. And um, Sol I'm just going to read really quick. Thus, well, verse 1 says, Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver and the gold, and all the furnishings in the treasury of the house of God. And so we find Haman in verse 12, but I'm going to go up a little and read verse 11. When the priests came out from the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had consecrated themselves without keeping separate divisions. And all the Levites, I'm sorry, and all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Haman, and Jaduthan, with their sons and relatives, all clothed in, clothed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood to the east of the altar, and with them 120 priests were sounding with trumpets. It happened when the trumpet players and singers made one sound to praise and give thanks to the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, and his mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud. And the priests were not able to stand in order to serve because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. I could just stop there and be done. Because these musicians, the Levitical singers and musicians were so important. You just think about your church. Um, I know it goes from just standing there singing to really getting into the music on the other extreme. And um, when the church is lifting up, the, after actually after the um, the pan after we were quarantined, and when we went back to church, you can just tell that people were singing loudly and praising God and. God was brought into the house and I can and this and um, I can just imagine what this scene looked like in Second Chronicles 5. It's awesome. The musicians are the musicians are just bringing the house down. You know and so, you know, I just think about it in today's times of how musicians and the singers and you go to a concert and depending on just how good the music is and they're really getting into it, they are going to, if you've ever been to a Christian concert, which is 
awesome because you're you're just praising God and you're lifting up the house and it's just amazing. So I just found today's and reading this in scripture to be very fascinating and just eye opening. Okay, so second Chronicles that was five. And so the last place that I found Haman's name, well, I didn't find it, but the Blue Letter Bible did for me, was Second Chronicles 35. Actually, I lied. So Second Chronicles 29 also talks about Haman. But before we get that, let me just tell you, because I wanted to know what was going on and because it talks about um, these are Haman's kids or people in his line. But after Solomon, there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of kings after him, and some were good in the eyes of the Lord, some were evil in the eyes of the Lord. And so um, the wickedness people started to, you know, worship. What, what does it say? Um, so like in Second Chronicles 24, 17, it says, After the death of Jehoiada, the officials of Judah came and paid homage to the king. At that time, the king listened to them. Then they abandoned the house of the Lord and God of their fathers, and they served the Asherah poles and idols. The divine wrath was on Judah and Jerusalem because of this guilt. And God sent prophets to return them to the Lord, these warned the people, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit, verse 20, Then the Spirit of God clothed Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, and he stood above the people, saying, Thus says God, Why are you transgressing the commandments of the Lord so that you will not be successful? Because all you have, because you all have abandoned the Lord, he has abandoned you. And then I recall the things that are being said in 88, and it it starts to make sense, you know. So you have laid me in the depths of the pit, the pit and dark and deep regions. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You have caused my com- companions to be far from me. You have made me an abomination to them. Um, so just knowing what has happened over the span and what's going on and people worshiping idols and being away from the Lord. Uh, Second Chronicles 26, four, it talks about Uzziah and he did not, I'm sorry. And he did what was correct in the eyes of the Lord as everything his father, Amaziah had done. And he sought after God in the days of Zechariah, the one who instructed him in the fear of the Lord. And in the days that he sought after the Lord, God caused him to succeed. But then in verse 16, it talks about Uzziah's punishment for pride. And and as he grew strong, his heart grew more proud, leading to his destruction. Then he acted unfaithfully against the Lord his God, for he entered the temple main hall of the Lord to burn incense on the altar, which he was not supposed to do. And so he gets leprosy because... He didn't do what he was supposed to do in the house of God. And then you have Jotham, Jotham. And he did what was correct in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. However, he did not enter the temple of the Lord, but the people continued acting corruptly. And so you can see the downfall of Israel. And then we get to Hezekiah, king of Judah, Second Chronicles 29, we're at 44 minutes. I do apologize if this is long, but this, is, this was so intriguing to me. Um, Hezekiah um, was king of Judah as well. And so he cleanses the temple. And so in verse 11, it says, My people do not... Actually... Okay, so Hezekiah is saying, listen to me, Levites, and Haman and his family are Levites, and the musicians and the singers, 
the Levites. So it says, listen to me, Levites, consecrate yourselves and consecrate the house of the Lord God of your fathers and bring out the detestable things from the holy sanctuary for our fathers have acted unfaithfully and have done what is evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and they have abandoned him. They have turned their face from the sanctuary of the Lord and have turned their back. They also shut the doors of the vestibule and have extinguished the lamps, nor have they burned incense or burnt offerings in the holy place of God of Israel. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord has come upon, come on Judah and Jerusalem for a terror, horror, and scorn, as you all can see with your own eyes. Observe our fathers have fallen by the sword, and now our sons, daughters, wives are in captivity for all this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel so that his burning anger might turn away from us. My people, verse 13, 11, my people do not now be negligent for the Lord has chosen you to, you all to stand in his pre presence to serve him and to be ministers and make sacrifices for him. And then the Levites arose and then it, it names who the Levites were. And then it says from the descendants of Haman. Jehiel and Shammai. So you see Haman's descendants are there and they are going to consecrate themselves and consecrate the, um, the, the, um, yeah, the temple. And so we go, we move to verse 25 and, and second Chronicles 29. And it says, Hezekiah, he set the Levites at the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres according to the commandment of David and God, I'm sorry, and Gad, the seer of the king, and Nathan, the prophet, for the commandment came from the Lord through his prophets. So the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. Then Hezekiah gave the command to offer the burnt offering on the altar. When they started the burnt offering, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and the instruments of David, king of Israel, the entire assembly worshipped the singers. I'm sorry. The entire assembly worshipped. The singers sang and the trumpeters sounded. All this took place until the burnt offering was finished. The, and so for Psalm 88 to start off as, for me, it's to start off with someone just in the deep darkness and... To end up knowing that the musicians and the instruments and the people who played the instruments were just an important part of worship and praise is amazing. And so I would I'd probably go a little deeper and start um, separating a lot more things. Uh, more things that I have that have come to my attention as I was reading through this and I wanted to finish this before it becomes an hour long video and if you stay with me this long thank you and if you dig if you go and look up Haman for yourself and read through it and read through just where he was and then the events surrounding him surrounding his life or his descendants life it's really interesting. And let me know what you found or what stood out to you in your own Bible study. You know, the seer and the word of God is a prophet. And Haman was a prophet. He, he did prophecy through music, which I don't know. I just didn't know that was even a thing, I guess. I don't know. But so I encourage you to just start in Psalms or wherever, whatever Psalms is good because you're learning the history of just the history of where, what, what all is taking place. And it's like, and then when, after I was reading through the music or all the information about the music, this is what it's going to be. I wonder if this is just a template for when Jesus returns, how we're going to hear and worship the Lord with music and just the whole thing. So I wanted to go 
dig deeper into that as well. So, but we're at 40, 50 minutes now. I do apologize. So I hope you were able to even decipher anything that I said today. I pray the Lord, the um, Holy Spirit spoke through me and you learned something or it made you want to dig deeper in your own time, in your own Bible to get closer to know the Lord. And this is awesome. And you're awesome. And I thank you for watching. God bless you.